I remember when Kanye West started doing the little gospel music he was doing, and I said, I said, I sure hope Kanye ain't playing with God. Then I just seen a little clip of him talking about his issues with Christ and that he prayed to Jesus when he was going through some stuff and he didn't see Jesus show up. And to be honest with you, that I, I remember I was working with a guy in the group home and he was the manager of the group home and he didn't have like faith. He didn't have a faith and he found out I was a Christian and we were talking about it and I was like, you know, what is your religion? And he was like, I don't really have one. And he and I was like, why not? He was like, because my mom died when I was young and I prayed to Jesus, you know, I was, and I was like, well, he said he was wondering like, how can a God, how can God let your mom die? And, I, you know, when you're young and I thought about it and I'm like, a lot of people have such a misunderstanding of God because we're not instructed to read the Bible. So people have this image of God that God is like a genie in a bottle, like from the movie where he rubbed the little, the, the little thing and the genie come out and then grant the three wishes. That's what a lot of people think that God is. And people think that God is like a, a dictator and not understanding that we have free will and the world is on free will. And it's not always God's will that we have our will. And whatever happens, the role of God is to help us get through that. It's not to always change it to what we want it to be. But there is growth in every experience. There's growth in loss. There's growth in love. There's growth in pain. There's growth in heartache. There's growth in struggle. And it's not always that the answer is no, but sometimes it's that the answer is life. So with life, there is a birth date and there is a death date and everyone has their own. And we don't have the power to change that. And God may deem to change it, but even that is will bring glory to God. And a lot of times things that we see as loss really propels us and takes us to the next level. And we have to understand that God is not a genie in the bottle and that his will must be done. And I, I think about this a lot and I to prepare myself because I know there will be a day where I'm, I may be losing something and I'm praying that God doesn't let me lose it. But he doesn't intervene because that loss is going to bring glory to his name through my story. And I'm reminded of Jesus dying on the cross and how here is the son of God, the only begotten son of God who came to earth. And here is a son asking his father, let me, let this cup pass from me. Like, let me avoid this, this path that you've put me on. Like, can this be taken from me? Like this burden, this, this call that I have to carry, can you remove it? And God said, no to his only begotten son. And Jesus had to go and be crucified for the sins of others when he was blameless. And just that understanding 
it helps me understand that I may not always get the answer that I want, but God can turn anything into something for the good. No matter what that loss looks like, no matter how great that loss is, no matter what it is, God can turn it into the good. And I want you to be reminded of that because so many people lose faith in God because what they wanted did not wasn't given to them. But how do you know that if what you want is right, like you may pray that someone stays alive, but that person in their spirit may be ready to go because of the pain that they're in. And so to pray that someone lives when they may in their heart say, I've ran my race. And although time may be short or although this may seem early, this will strengthen you. This will make you wiser, make you appreciate life more. That sometimes people's death brings life. Because you see life differently and you live more abundantly and you pursue things differently because of what you've seen someone lose. And you know that tomorrow isn't promised and so it changes how much you worry. It changes how much you stress. I remember in the third grade watching my best friend die and we were at PE, physical education, and we were on our first or maybe the second lap and he collapsed to the ground. And me and my other friend continued to walk. And we were laughing because we thought that he like crossed his feet and fell to the ground to be funny because he would always kind of, you know, crack little jokes and be a funny guy. He was new to the school. And so we kept walking. And then after walking maybe 10 steps or so, we looked back and he hadn't got up. And so we went back to him because he was still on the ground. It was like, well, man, maybe something happened to him for real. And we went back and he was kind of like, choking like for air and we screamed and we called a coach and the coach ran over and I remember the coach going down to like do CPR and I remember like his eyes rolling in the back of his head and maybe like something white coming out of his mouth or just kind of like him like I watched him die right in front of me and I was in the third grade so I'm like you know nine years old you know, eight, nine years old. And so to see someone's soul leave their body right in front of you and to think about, man, my son is in the fourth grade. I saw this in the ninth grade. And although I didn't want that to happen and although if I could change it, I would. I don't know what I may not never fully understand what good came to my life by me seeing that and I may not understand what he could have been spared from later in his life or what type of miracle that it could have been for his parents for him to live that long and they could have been at peace to say yes we got eight or nine years with him when the doctor told us he died from an enlarged heart. When the doctor told us we might not get four. So we don't have a rhyme or reason. And it's not for everything in life to be understood. It's not for every prayer to be answered. I'm never mad with God because I understand everything, no matter what it is, can work together for the good. So whatever God chooses, I'm okay with it. Whatever God allows, it ain't even that God has chosen it because he set the world in motion and God does not tempt us and hurt us. That's what the adversary does. But whatever God allows, there must be a purpose in it there, there there's glory in the story and it's going to do something for somebody 
in the kingdom, no matter how unfair and painful it may be, there is something that could be made into good. And that's what we got to realize. We got to realize and understand. And so I remember saying that about Kanye. And, and to be honest with you, I believe that Kanye, see, when you love God and when you called by God and when you truly choose to allow Christ to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior, that's not something you turn away from. It's not something that you can ever denounce or walk away from. What what we see is, is just like how you see on the movies, how the villain will have this ability to be transformed and the villain can mimic your face and you will, and the villain will go into like your house or your job with your face on and everybody will talk to the villain like they're talking to you because the it has embodied you and it mimics you like the marvel movies and the the dc comics or whatever it is them type of things where you see that that's what satan does Satan will use people with a heart of greed like Kanye West and say, hey, you need money. So why don't you go and play on the church? Why don't you go and play on the church? Because you've raked in so many millions from the secular music. You can go rake in millions from quote unquote Christian music. And you can rake in millions. And so we truly thought that someone who would call himself Jesus, which is the most blasphemous thing in the world, could truly have a change of heart. But really, he was a Decepticon. He is a Decepticon sent by Satan to deceive and confuse. And the reason why Satan used Kanye like this in this way was to get the youth and a lot of people to start believing in God and talking about God and saying maybe God is cool because Kanye is making this cool Christian music and he keeps talking about God. But then when he flips and he changes and, and now he's saying, you know, like he's mad with Christ because Christ didn't do what he wanted Christ to do when he wanted Christ to do it and he's not taking any personal responsibility for never living like Christ. He never embodied the word of Christ. He never embodied humility and kindness and patience and love and righteousness. He never became like Christ. So how can you expect Christ to really show up in your life and, and the Holy Spirit to take control and for God to deliver blessings and opportunities and deliver you when you're still emulating Satan and the things of Satan. God doesn't work like that. You can't call Christ because God judges your heart. God looks at the heart of the man, not the words of the man. So Kanye didn't realize he never had a heart change. He just had a, a word change, lip service, but his heart was still hard and his heart was still a heart after Satan's heart. So when you pray to God, like the Bible say, you ask, but you ask amiss, God can't even respond in that because of where your heart is. Because one thing that God cannot do is lie and God will uphold his word. And if you are in a place and in a way and in, in a season, in a space where God can move, he will move. But if your heart, you crying out to Satan, if your heart looking like Satan, God not finna pour out blessings and favor and opportunity just because you asking for it because he knows you asking out of greed. You're asking out of entitlement. You're asking out of selfishness. That's not how the spirit of God works. God is a spirit, not a genie in a bottle, not a not an old white man with a long beard sitting in a gold chair in the sky with a tall cane just making things rain when you want it to. 
you got to understand God is a spirit. It's different than what a lot of people are thinking it is. But when you read the Holy Bible from front to back, you start to learn the attributes of God and you will know the voice of God. You will know the image of God. You will know the things of God and you will know better and understand because God will give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So you won't be able to be angry with God because you'll understand, as the Bible says, God's ways are not your ways and his thoughts are not your thoughts. And so what I, what I want to warn you of is more demons that Satan is using. Another one I believe he is using right now is the boxer Ryan Garcia is a is embodied by demons and he but yet he is demon possessed but saying the name of Christ. See someone who is Holy Ghost filled cannot say the name of Christ and then say a curse word. It's impossible. It's impossible because the Holy Spirit does not operate in the profane and the Holy Spirit does not operate in confusion. Do you see how confusing Ryan Garcia is being? How confusing Kanye West is? There, God is not the author of confusion. Do you, do you hear the message that I'm giving you from the Holy Spirit? Is it confusing you at all? If you are walking with God, if you're walking with God, then everything I'm saying is plain as day. Because God is not the author of confusion. God does not bring confusion like Ryan Garcia and Kanye West. God brings clarity. And because God is peace. So you won't have peace from confusion. You have peace from clarity. God brings clarity. God brings humility. God brings peace. So that's what people have to understand. God brings clarity. And so you're going to see more people that Satan will use through demonic possession, but they will claim to be a Christian and they will claim to be a Christ follower. And they will literally say, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But then they will continue to lead people to hell. They will continue to lead people astray because they are demon possessed. And there are demons that will possess individuals and have those individuals saying the name of God. And that's what you have to realize and understand. So beware, be mindful, be prayerful. Do not jump for joy every time you hear someone say the name of God. But instead, as the Bible says, you try the spirit by the spirit. And you will know the tree by the fruit it bears. So a man who is walking with the Holy Spirit won't even choose a certain type of wife. He won't even operate in a certain type of way. Like I seen Ryan Garcia talking about he's going to stop posting, but he's going to be checking his DMs of the beautiful women. A single man who is not abstinent is not going to solicit women to DM him if he's representing Christ as a single man. He's going to live like Apostle Paul and he's going to be respectful and responsible. And so this is the, the demons that you see and you got to understand this media space and everything Ryan Garcia is saying is a lie because he he has mental health issues every year. If there is an Illuminati and secret societies, they're not going to approach someone who has proclaimed loudly to have mental health issues because they're not going to give this person the ammunition but he is seriously demon possessed and that and he is actually making Christians 
believe him. There are Christians that are believing what he's saying. When you notice, no one has ever said what he's saying as loud and as boldly as he's saying it. And do you think he would be the first person to be approached? And it's not because he's a Christian either that they would approach him and they would not approach a kid who gets punched in the head for a living. That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. So those powers that be in those secret societies and in those organizations that make things happen in high places for each other, they are not dealing with someone as petty and as broke as Ryan Garcia. He may have money to the average person, but he doesn't have money to the secret societies and the upper echelon. Kanye West too broke and volatile for them. That's why he has to talk the way he talks. The people that they will deal with is the type of people like a Jay-Z and Beyonce, people who are quiet. They'll deal with a Barack and Michelle, people who mind their business and get to their money and use their power like a puppet master to influence. So the demonic influence that Beyonce has over women at her concerts with the satanic imagery, she does it in a subtle way that you don't even realize that that is a demonic symbol on her belt buckle, that that is a demonic chant that she's doing on the stage. That's who those demons and secret societies and people in high places utilize. They're not going to use volatile, mentally health, mental health ridden individuals like Kanye West and Ryan Garcia. They're not going to do that. But see, those people will be in the industry and around those demonic influences and they're susceptible. But because they know of God, that's where the spiritual warfare comes in. But because they don't actually read the Holy Bible and live by the Holy Bible, they have no spiritual power. So they're saying the name of God, but they're not living righteously and holy. So therefore, and they're not calling on the name of the one true God. So they have no power in the spiritual realm. So they are fighting demons in the flesh and they're fighting demons on their own. And that is why they become mentally deranged because the Holy Spirit knows them not. Because their life and their walk and their pursuit of righteousness and the Holy Spirit is void. And so therefore they are bankrupt spiritually as it relates to the Holy Spirit. And they are at war with literal demons and losing the battle in the public eye. That's what you see and happen. And somebody who knows them and loves them will have to stop worrying about being on their good side and speak truth to power. Thank God. Was was he? No, I don't say thank God because I wish I had one of their number. And if you got Ryan Garcia or Kanye West number, send it to me. And if, and even if they block me after that one message, I'm gonna get that message off. And they're going to read that message and that message is going to punch them in their chest spiritually. And the look, the, the, the God that they have talked to or, or tried to get to know, but didn't understand that you got to have a, a walk with it as well. Not just words. Faith without works is dead. You got to have works with your faith. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. They think they just could talk and not do. You can't just be hearers of the word, like the Bible say. You got to be doers of the word. And that's where they struggling. 
But, hey, this Tony Gaskin, God bless you. We're going to continue to talk about this, and we'll break this down a little more. But we still, you know, it's babies in the Lord on here, so we still got to keep the milk flowing as well, not just not just the, the meat and potatoes. Hey, God bless you. We'll talk soon.